Hi, my lovely rats. So today I'm going to be working on a character info sheet. I already have Ludovica drawn out, so we're just going to be working on Buddy slash Syndrome for now. That's right, this Syndrome. Gotta clarify, because I know some of you rats only have one brain cell and that's okay. I'll speak slowly. So I already have his sketch laid out and I'm just inking him down. And this is going to go fairly quickly. I have like a limited color palette I want to use and I'm just going to like add this at the end of a future chapter of Divine Intervention. So this is kind of like a sneak peek, you know? This is Syndrome post the whole jet incident. So he's going to have like his scar and um, different colored eye. And I'm not going to indicate his arm in this just because I don't think his hands even show. But he's also wearing like a sleeve over his arm, his robotic arm. If you hear rain in the background, it's raining today and I hate it. I was supposed to be going out. I'm supposed to be outside right now, but it's raining. Anyways, I just work on lining his face and I was a little worried at first when I was working on this, I was still going through my little art block. So I was worried it would turn out weird, but I liked it all right, you know, it, it took some adjustments and I tried playing around with like drawing his nose more, I don't know if thin is the right word. I didn't want to have so much aggressive line art, if that makes sense. I saw a post saying how men in mangas and manhwas and all that, how they look attractive because they only have two nostrils and their nose isn't so visible. But I stuck with it for as long as I could. So like, that was like something different for me, the way I drew his nose. And here I'm just working on his clothing. Picking out his outfit to wear, like his casual clothing, was a little bit difficult, but I just went based on what I saw the outfit dressing other male characters like, and I went from there. I stuck to his regular color palette later on. But I'm just touching up his hairline, and I think now's a great time to answer your questions you rats asked me. So I have three questions. The first question is, do you think you should always start with a base before drawing or? I'm not sure what they mean by base. If they mean a sketch, um, I think sketches help you understand what you intend to put down. In which case, I believe that depending on how you work, typically, yeah, you create sketches, you create um, concept art ideas, you plan out colors depending on what the project is. Um, but I think that varies on the artist. I think it's advised to do that typically, especially if it's a piece of art you're being paid to do. If it's art you're doing on your own, who cares what you do? Do what you want to do. But if it's art you're being paid for, then most of the time people like make thumbnail sketches and try to figure out what their client wants. Second question. How do you do your animation so quickly? I don't know what this what this rat's talking about. And I'm not gonna call them out because they know who they are and they've been here for a long time. But I don't do my animations quickly at all. Um, if you mean that I don't take like five months to do them, I simplify the designs and what I want. I'm realistic with what I can do in my time limit. So I don't like paint a watercolor background to animate against or I don't have characters that need to be like rendered in hyper realistic painting styles. So that can help you like get things out quicker. But um, aside from that, I think I take a fairly long time as anyone else would. Animation takes a long time in general, but being realistic with what you want is helpful. And there is a third question. I'm not sure why this question is here. <laughs> Again, I'm not gonna call this a rat, but it says any advice to those getting into the art industry? I'm not in it. You, you tell me. When you get a hold of it, you tell me. Wow! Look at the drip! Check out the Love Lab Redbubble link in the bio. In the bio. Hit that like and subscribe button to become a rat today. And when you subscribe, you join my little rat army. And when you're a rat, you're family. So back to the drawing, I'm just working on the shoes and I wasn't sure about them at first, 
But I ended up settling with that. And then as you see, I went back and I added in the line art for his nose because I couldn't take it. Like I said, I stuck with it as long as I could. And I was like, I need his nose to be visible. This invisible nose stuff is not for me. Like, in fact, I hate it. I hate when characters don't have noses. Sometimes it's cute, but like only time like big bobbleheads, not like grown, <laughs> grown adult, fully sized human individuals. If it's like a little chibi or something, okay, but I can't take it. But anyways, I'm coloring his outfit and I'm pulling colors from Ludovica's outfit and I'm applying them to him so they're in the same color palette zone. And you will watch me go over this color palette multiple times because I was struggling. Like, I know that his color palette as an individual, Syndrome's palette involves blues and navy tones. That's what he wears. But I want him to also fit for what the color palette of the illustration is. So I'm trying to like adjust the tones and then I'm like, okay, this is fine. But it felt like too much blue. So I was like, okay, I'll make the belt brown. And then I was like, no, that's weird. So I made the belt dark blue. And then I'm like, the belt buckle's too bright and I darkened that. And then I'm like, well, no, there's too much blue now. So then I, <laughs> I try like adjusting things. That way he like doesn't, he's, his outfit isn't so overpoweringly blue. And then I was like, maybe a pattern would be nice. A pattern would like break up all this darkness and blue. And a dark outfit is okay, but for the simple illustration I'm doing, I felt like it was too muddied. Like his silhouette is distinct though. But I was worried about like the values and how they were playing. And then even though blue is in the color palette, Ludovica's wearing such bright, warm colors, it felt like he didn't quite fit in the moment, you know? I was happy though with the proportions. I was happy that the proportions lined up. I sketched him out on like a separate layer. I didn't have Ludovica there the whole time. So I was worried that when I put them together that the proportions wouldn't plan out well. And like, when you do characters like the same room, you need them together, but. So I lost part of my voice recording footage. I don't know where that went, but let's talk about it some more. <laughs> so at this point I'm using black and white um, filters to try to like get the values right. And people kept saying, they kept saying, make buddy black, make buddy black. And I'm like, I can't see him being a black man, but he looked kind of good black. You all saw it? That silhouette was hidden. But anyways, I'm still adjusting it. I'm still trying to like add brown, still trying to like lighten up his outfit, keep the colors the same. I'm like, none of it's eating. None of it's good, but. I just keep going and I liked how it turned out near the end. It wasn't perfect, but it was something. He has the brown hues, he has his blue tones. It worked and it fit the color palette. At this point, I'm adding him onto the character sheet and I'm just like fitting him into the scene. So I'm like adding a stroke layer so they pop out against the information. And I'm using my other sketch to make sure they're both the right size because I thought he was a bit too big, but it fit, you know? You saw it, it snapped right well. At this point, I'm adding in their information and adding the info was like a fun part. I got to develop some things about Ludovica better as well as understanding some things about Syndrome more. I had to fudge a few areas and for what I didn't know, I had to like get rid of it, but whatever. Um, also, I wrote down five foot six incorrectly. I'm seeing that now. I think I swapped the comma and quotation usage, but yeah, no, 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 none of you saw that. At this point, I was trying to like figure out a new movie name. That way it's not so obvious what movie I'm referencing. I mean, it's not an official piece of media. I can mention movie names, but I thought it'd be fun not to. I thought it'd be fun to like do a spin on what we all know it's supposed to be. Or if you're in the know, you know what it's supposed to be. So like her favorite movie is The Person Snatchers. But um, the movie geeks know what it is. The movie geeks will understand. <laughs> at this point I'm just adding in more stuff I read cats comma wrestling I didn't see the comment first I was like cat wrestling when I put that down that sounds really cute but also really concerning why are they pitting these cats against each other but um yeah if you hear it raining sorry about that it's really pouring down right now I think it's like supposed to be snowing in some areas so I guess that's why but anyways I keep like moving them around um Ludovica fits well into her moment but Divine, not Divine, <laughs> Buddy, he's so bulky that he like cuts into the the speech, the text. So I'm like trying to figure that out and arrange things that way. And I'm just replacing all of Ludovica's information with his information. And everything I put down for him is like information that I understood from implications in the movie concerning his character type. 
as well as like just like usual stereotypes like i made his favorite drink a rum and coke but then i was like is coke just a name for soda or is that like a specific thing so then i said rum and cola because i figured a cola was like a general term for just brown soda um and i was gonna do a favorite movie and i was like I can't just put on an old movie, so I put on his favorite music instead. I know what his favorite music is, or at least I know what music he was depicted enjoying in the Syndrome um, cutscene for the Incredibles Lego game. But I just keep adding more information, I replace what I need to, I add his likes, his dislikes. I put down that his ideal partner was someone smart and seductive because I feel like that kind of describes Mirage as well as Mr. Incredible because Mr. Incredible is like. Buddy commended him on his intellect for hiding underneath the bones of another super and that was kind of cool <laughs> It was kind of a cool scene. I get it, but that's what I figured but um, yeah This is the the full image. I did struggle a bit. So I keep doing like design stuff I add like a half tone in the background and that was cute I was worried that wouldn't look good, but the fading looked nice, but later on I'm gonna add a translucent white background to the text and I was trying to like find an easy way to do this and I was struggling. Like at first I was like, what if I had like notebook paper? But I didn't like that. So then I'm like, okay, a translucent shape. But then I want that like a stroke. And I want the stroke to be solid and the filler to be translucent, but it was either all or nothing. So then I made like multiple layers trying to figure out how to get the stroke to be solid and the filler to be translucent. And it was, I was doing overcomplicated stuff I feel like. But now I know, so there's that. Also, if you want to read Divine Intervention, the link is down below in the description, as well as in my About Me. I update, I try to update weekly, I post on my Instagram or Twitter when I can, not but so far I have a few chapters out, so check that out. It's like an Incredibles fan comic where Central falls in love, ooh. Anyway, here's the finished piece. Um, I like how it came out, I like the limited color palette I used, and I can't wait to post at the end of a chapter. Make sure to stay updated so you can read more about Divine Intervention. Thanks for watching! Until next time, bye!